If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to the demonstration series of the Smart Zone Controller based on the high scale deployment of the 5.2 Smart Zone release. The videos in this series will show you basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, we will provide the information on setting up accounts in the Smart Zone and associating them with the system and partner domains. So let's get started. Now I've already logged into this Smart Zone instance with this super admin account underneath the system domain. This gives me the ability to go in and configure most everything within this Smart Zone instance, including admin accounts or other accounts for this specific Smart Zone instance. We can also see it's a high scale deployment of this Smart Zone 5.2 release. Now, up to this point, I have created a couple of partner domains as well as a couple of subdomains. You can see they're listed under the Health tab. Now, the partner domains represent a administrative boundary, meaning that we can create accounts under those domains specifically. So therefore, those particular accounts that are configured will only have access to the privileges of that particular partner domain. The subdomains, however, are subdomains of the system account. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. So if I go to access points, we can see that the partner domains are actually part of the system domain, but they are those administrative boundaries that I was talking about. Additionally, we have the subdomains and these subdomains are part of that system domain. So when we create accounts, we technically have three different domains that we can configure accounts under, meaning that when we configure them underneath each one of those domains, they will only have privileges specific to that domain that they're associated with. The subdomains, however, we could later create group membership for particular accounts that are configured under that system domain and allow for those to have only privileges for those subdomains that are listed here. We can grant or limit access to those subdomains through group membership, which we discuss in another video within this series. So now that we have identified, we have three domains that we can configure accounts under. Let's go down under the administration tab and admin and roles and then specifically the administrators tab. Now this defaults to the system domain and that's going to list all the accounts that are associated underneath this smart zone instance. We see with the two accounts we have configured here, they are managed by different domains, admin by system and admin PD2 by partner domain two. This means they're going to be limited in scope of the activities that they can perform based on the domains that they are listed under or associated with. Now, if you have a managed service provider deployment of SmartZone, or you simply have tons and tons of accounts that are configured in this SmartZone instance, it can be a little overwhelming because they're all going to be listed on the right-hand side here. So you could have a big long list of all the accounts that are configured. The nice thing is you can go underneath these partner domains and more specifically, just look at the accounts that are associated with that particular domain. So in this case, we see the admin PD2 is configured, but it's underneath or managed by that partner domain two. And then we, if we go under partner domain one, we can see that there are no accounts configured under that particular domain. That's the domain we're gonna configure an account under today. So we're going to click on create that will open up the create administrator account window that allows us to configure an account underneath that domain. It's important to note that the account name that you create here needs to be globally unique, regardless of the domain that you might be configuring it under. So we're gonna go in and create an admin PD1, identifying that it's kind of associated with that partner domain one. And then we simply go in and create a password. And see also that I did not duplicate the password correctly, so I'm going to type that in again. And once I do so, it turns to blue or it says that's okay. Now note there's only three fields that are mandatory, which is the account name, the new password, and the confirm new password as well. 
We could put in more details here to give us more information on this particular account or who that might be associated with. I'm going to just go ahead and push OK here. Now, once I've done that, we see it's, it pops up underneath the Partner One domain. If I were to click on the system domain, we can see that it's going to be listed there because, as I mentioned earlier, all accounts, that, if you're clicked on the system domain, all accounts are listed. And then we could go into each one of these domains and select them individually to see the accounts that are associated specific to that partner domain. So now that the account is created, that doesn't necessarily mean it can now go in and start administrative tasks within this smart zone. We have another process that we need to do, and that is to associate it with a group. When we associate it with a group, that a group has certain privileges within SmartZone, and we will show you that in another video. Thank you for taking the time of viewing this video demonstration of the SmartZone 5.2 release. Thank you.